This video demos the integration between VMware vCenter and AppStra AOS. This gives AOS powerful insight into the virtualization layer so that we're able to enhance our troubleshooting, visibility, and monitoring into the virtual infrastructure layer. The topology of the demo starts with a leaf spine fabric that's managed by AOS server. What we'll see is that we have integrated with vCenter server via the APIs so that we have visibility into the objects available in vCenter server. These include a pair of ESXi hosts, and on these hosts, there is a virtual distributed switch. Within the distributed switch, there are a couple port groups, one that's tagged with VLAN 10 and one that's tagged with VLAN 20. And then on each host, we have virtual machines connected. So first in the demo, we'll see how we're able to view the virtual infrastructure, how we're able to look at the port groups, the VLANs, search for the VM names, and then we'll look at what happens on changes and how that ties into our intent-based analytics. The integration of AOS and vCenter server gives us visibility into the virtual infrastructure for deeper insight and meaningful correlation. Yet it still provides a clear delineation of what the network admins are responsible for versus what the folks managing the virtual infrastructure within the hosts. Here I'm logged into AOS server. I've already set up a connection to an existing vCenter server. I've done that by pointing to the management IP or host name and providing credentials. And then I've also associated this to an existing blueprint. In this blueprint, I have the two leaves and the two spines we saw in the diagram and each leaf has one server connected. From the layers here, if I wanted to see, let's say, which hosts have hypervisors, from the dropdown I can select has hypervisor, and I can see these two hosts are selected. I can do the same for has virtual machines. In our case, they both have virtual machines, but you could have a case where you have a host with a hypervisor, but doesn't yet have any virtual workloads on it. Now let's say I want to see which virtual machines are running on a particular host. I'll click on Rack 2 Server 1, and I'll see the virtual machines listed out under the server. On the right-hand side, if I click the VMs tab, I'll see the hypervisor, either the IP address or the fully qualified domain name. So here's how I can correlate what the server is called in AOS versus what the server is referred to that I might see in vSetter Server. Below that, I can see the three VMs, and then I'll actually see the names of the port groups on the distributed virtual switch that are present in vCenter. So now I can start to correlate the networking from the virtualization world with what I have in AOS. Now, moving on to the nodes view, I can see a list of all the nodes in my blueprint, including the two servers at the bottom. If I expand columns, I can look and add these fields, hypervisor and VM count. What that shows me is the density of the virtual machines on each of the hosts that have hypervisors. I could use this information to help me identify where I have high density workloads and where I might have servers that are underutilized based on the virtual machine count. Let's look at the virtual tab. First, under virtual networks, I see the virtual networks that have been created within AOS. So I have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 present. Virtual infra, this shows the vCenter that's connected that I had previously associated with the blueprint. Now in virtual infra inventory, this section is gonna show me all the distributed virtual port groups that are within the vCenter that I'm connected to. More importantly, it's also gonna show me the VLAN number. So I can see not only the label that's been assigned, but the VLAN number so that I can ensure that I have the proper VLANs created on AOS that are present within vCenter. We've seen a host and a network-centric view. Let's look at a virtual machine-centric view. If I click on Query and I select this new field VMs, first I'll see a list of all the virtual machines in the vCenter that I'm connected to. Now let's say I'm only interested in those VMs that we were looking at in our deployment. I can search for a particular VM name here, and I can also use regular expressions. 
So I'm going to look for all the VMs that start with the word demo and match anything after that. And here I can see the four virtual machines in the demo. So not only do I see the VM names, I'm immediately able to see which server it's running on, both either an IP address or a fully qualified domain name if available, and what the server is called within AOS. I'll also see exactly where this VM is connected to. I can see that it's connected to this leaf on this Swap3 interface. In the port group name, I can see the VMware port group that the virtual machine is connected to on the vSwitch. I can see other relevant information like the MAC addresses on the VM and the vCenter that this information came from. So this allows me to easily correlate the VM-centric information with what I'm actually connected to from an AOS perspective, and it lets me immediately jump to the relevant server with a click. And I can see both the physical connectivity, I can see the other VMs, and I can look at the virtual connectivity as well. Appstra AOS also includes our powerful intent-based analytics. Within analytics, we've defined a new pre-built probe called VLAN probe. What this probe is going to do is it's going to check and make sure that all the VLANs that are created on the leaves match and include all the VLANs that are created on the port groups within the vCenter hosts. If I open up this probe, what it's doing is querying to see the VLANs that are configured on AOS 10 and 20 to see if those match the VLANs that are configured on the vSphere infrastructure. It's going to look for any differences. It's going to count and see if there are additional VLANs, which we currently don't have. They match right now. And then it will also raise an anomaly if either there are more VLANs on AOS or if there are more VLANs on vSphere. Now we're going to see our intent-based analytics probe in action. So recall this is the infrastructure that we started with. Let's say the vCenter admin decides to add a new port group and they tie that port group to VLAN 30. Let's say they also create a new virtual machine and they connect it to this new port group. Now the challenge is if they made this change and didn't let anyone know on the network infrastructure side, this VLAN wouldn't be allowed on the trunk and the switch wouldn't be aware of the VLAN. Let's see what happened to the probe once I added the port group and the virtual machine in vCenter. Coming back to AOS server, I can now see in the analytics pane that there's one anomaly raised with the VLAN probe. If I click through and scroll to the bottom, I can see this is where the anomaly is raised. And the anomaly is that there's more VLANs on vSphere than there are in AOS. And I can see that that total count is one. Now I can also walk through the additional stages of this processing pipeline to see exactly how that was determined. So this probe starts by looking at the VLANs that are configured on AOS. It's doing a query against our graph database. And we'll see that the, one, the VLANs defined on AOS are 10 and 20. The vSphere VLANs, we see 10, 20, and an additional VLAN 30. The next stage in the pipeline is going to look at the differences between the two. AOS only VLANs, we don't have any. vSphere only is the VLAN in question, 30, that's raising the anomaly. And then we see 10 and 20 that are common and that's expected. Moving forward, we'll see the count of additional VLANs. So is it one? Is it zero? Is it more than one VLAN we have a problem with? We already know that we're okay with the VLANs on AOS. The additional one is on vSphere. The next stage is going to say true false is there additional VLANs on AOS or vSphere. And we can see that the additional VLANs on vSphere is true. And this is in turn what raises the anomaly that determines, yes, we have a mismatch. There are more VLANs on vSphere and we need to take action. So if this was intended, what we could do is add the VLAN to the leafs on AOS. Um, if not, we could talk to the vSphere administrator and see if they meant to map that VLAN. But this gives us a very fast way to determine if a new VLAN has been added.
before we have to wait until someone comes and points and says the network isn't working, we're able to see where this mismatch is happening, which VLAN it is, and we know immediately where to go fix that. I could come to staging. I'm going to add the new virtual network, VLAN 30. And this was on a leaf. Create the VLAN. Commit the changes to active. And then we can see the anomaly has now cleared. The AOS VLANs 10, 20, and 30 match the vSphere VLANs 10, 20, and 30. So that's just one of the ways you can use our powerful intent-based analytics to determine any mismatches, to help you with proactive troubleshooting, and to help with better visibility. Overall, the vSphere integration with AOS gives you deep visibility into the virtualization infrastructure for deeper insight and meaningful correlation. It also gives you a clear delineation of what we see on the network versus what we see in the virtualization layer, yet shows how we can correlate activities between the two. Thank you for listening.